Earlier this week, the final critical step in raising the funds necessary for the construction of East Africa's biggest wind farm came to a close, capping a nine-year process that nearly floundered due to objections from the World Bank. At the call of that dispute in 2012, well, the World Bank's view that the take-or-pay tariff structure would essentially leave Kenya's main distribution and transmission company, Kenya Power, with a significant cost burden if the wind farm was up and running, but the transmission line linking that wind farm to the grid was not. Early on Thursday, I spoke to the chairman of the Lake Turkana Wind Power Project. Our conversation started by asking him how those challenges were overcome. We were aware of these, uh, of these concerns. They simply didn't want to, at a certain point, they found that the risk was too high and um, that it would uh, potentially cause uh, a call on the guarantees and whatever, and they, they simply decided. And that's where the African Development Bank came in? That's when the African Development Bank, because the African Development Bank had been working with this project for five, six years now. Yeah. At, at today's date. By, the, by that time, they had three years of advanced knowledge yeah. of all our reports. Or, uh, they were part of it. They were part of the uh, agreement of the, of the consultants that were selected, that, were, that, that made them comfortable, the other lenders comfortable, that they had the ability to, uh, to comment on uh, and, to, and to provide the solutions for it, the recommendations on how to stabilize and everything. So they didn't have a problem with it. They believed. They've always believed. Elsewhere in the world, when most people talk about wind, they're not looking at it as in the same context as baseload, as say hydro no, or geothermal. Not. But given the factors that you've mentioned, constant wind, it's unidirectional. We've got fairly reliable, you know, wind coming through more or less all the time. It's faster at night than it is during the day. Wouldn't it be fair to argue that, to some extent, at least with respect to Lake Turkana, particularly? You could virtually act like baseload within the Kenyan grid. Yes, I, I, I want to be very particular there. It would be very wrong to say that wind power and to give the impression that wind power is, is baseload. It's not. But on a site like the one we have, it is true that the performance that we expect of this wind farm will be very close to baseload. And therefore, it will be a very reliable source of power. If you look at the curves we have, the other very good thing is the predictability. If you look at our wind, you know, the, the, the wind, of course, has different, when we talk about 11.8, it's an average, which means that sometimes during the day it's probably blowing at 18, 19 meters per second, and sometimes it's blowing at 7. So the average wind speed is 11.8. So we have peaks and we have lows, all right? But those peaks and lows that go through a curve are very regular day on day. You've wrapped up the financial close, now you're on to the construction phase of the entire wind farm, so you should be done in the next 20, 25 months, give or take. The funding is complete, so, but for obvious reasons, we will not start because we, in all manners, we do not want to take the risk of being ready to deliver power before the transmission line, because we would cause Kenya damage, and that's the last thing we want to do. We will not do that, and we will make sure we don't do that.